हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द लास्ट पार्ट दैट इज पार्ट फोर ऑफ डोमेन वन दैट इज गवर्नेंस इन दिस पार्ट विल बी कवरिंग द टॉपिक्स सच एज द वैल्यू ऑफ रिस्क कम्युनिकेशन सेकेंड विल द पॉलिसीज एंड द स्टैंडर्ड्स इज डिफरेंसेस रिस्क मैनेजमेंट पॉलिसीज फोर्थ विल बी द नेक्स्ट दैट इज एक्सेप्शन मैनेजमेंट कमिंग ऑन द नेक्स्ट दैट इज आई एस ओ आई सी ट्वेंटी सेवन थाउजेंड फाइव प्रोसेस स्टेप्स विल hear it in details La at last will be the business process review principle or risk management and its process at last it will be the it risk in relation to other businesses coming to the asset valuation risk governance and at last it will be a three line of defense in detail we'll understand each and everything okay without uh, wasting time let's start with the first that is the value of risk communication all right now what happens the practice of the risk management right pertain to the audit security and business continuity management enhancing communication through a reporting hierarchy that facilitates sharing of information right on risk incident threat vulnerabilities and asset among these groups can lead to a higher level of precision in the risk management procedures understood so as a part of the risk management process it is important to communicate the potential threat or actual incidents existing vulnerabilities and the value of enterprise assets particularly for knowledgeable audience although reporting every risk incident is not necessary failing to communicate any of them can indicate an unstable or unhealthy enterprise understood so if a manager withhold information about issues and operational failures decisions could be based on incomplete or incorrect data so transparency is the key in the process similarly the risk management professionals must establish communication and reporting channel to provide the management with timely information okay it is also essential to encourage the communication of negative outcomes where appropriate right so similarly effective communication and openness are critical in shaping and comprehending an enterprise risk culture clear communication is crucial to mitigate the risk and remove doubt surrounding risk management right similarly discussing and conveying the risk openly and comprehensively is essential to properly manage and reduce the risk it is imperative that the stakeholders and personals are well informed and understand the risk in their respective roles to effectively manage the risk in the enterprise right so as we have discussed so let's move further ahead with the question answer series right friends this question answer series are in order to make the previous topics clear right the more you will answer the more you will be in a good state and able to grasp the earlier topic in a better way okay let's moving first questions question number 1 communication threat incident vulnerabilities and asset is essential for which risk management process just now we have studied the options are audit security option c that is business continuity management and option d that is risk management question number 2 what benefit can open communication of the risk provide option a greater awareness of the importance of the risk management option b informed risk decisions by the appropriate stakeholders option c transparency to external stakeholders and option d all of the above moving to the next question what perception can ineffective communication of an organization's risk to external stakeholders lead to first greater awareness of the importance of the risk management option next informed risk decision by the appropriate stakeholders option c transparency of external stakeholders and option d the perception of the organization is trying to hide the risk similarly coming to the next question which of the following is a consequence of poor communication on the risk options are number 1 and 
ओवर कॉन्फिडेंस इन द एंटरप्राइज कैपेबिलिटी एंड कंट्रोल्स नेक्स्ट ऑप्शन अ फॉल्स सेंस ऑफ सिक्योरिटी एट ऑल लेवल ऑफ द एंटरप्राइज नेक्स्ट ऑप्शन इंप्रूव्ड अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ एक्चुअल एक्सपोजर एंड नेक्स्ट ऑप्शन ग्रेटर अवेयरनेस ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ द रिस्क मैनेजमेंट फ्रेंड्स प्लीज डू कमेंट विद द करेक्ट आंसर एंड डोंट फॉरगेट टू सब्सक्राइब एंड हिट लाइक बटन ओके मूविंग नेक्स्ट द वैल्यू ऑफ द रिस्क कम्युनिकेशन राइट दे आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन फर्स्ट लेट्स सी द विच टाइप विच टू टाइप्स ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन आर फर्स्ट कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ द पुअर कम्युनिकेशन एंड बेनिफिट्स ऑफ ओपन कम्युनिकेशन राइट लाइक द एडवांटेज ऑफ द ओपन रिस्क कम्युनिकेशन इंक्लूड लाइक इनफॉर्म रिस्क डिसीजन ग्रेटर अवेयरनेस एंड ट्रांसपेरेंसी टू स्टेक होल्डर्स इन दिस वॉट हैपन्स ड्यू टू बेटर अवेयरनेस ऑफ द रियल एक्सपोजर एंड पॉसिबल बिजनेस इफेक्ट द राइट स्टेक होल्डर्स आर एबल टू मेक more informed risk choices right so greater understanding of the value and the relevance of incorporating risk management into every day task among all stakeholders right transparency with regard to the actual level of risk affecting the organization as well as the risk management system in place okay similarly coming moving further ahead let's discuss about the consequence of the poor communication first overconfidence false sense of security improper categorization of risk and misallocation of resources in this what happens the poor risk communication can lead to a number of negative outcomes right such as an overconfidence as discussed in the company's risk related capabilities and control right similarly second point that is false sense of security a false sense of security at all level of the company that like uh, such as improper uh, risk categorization misallocation of resource or else reduced value of the stakeholders right external stakeholders including like such as uh, clients investors and regulators may have inaccurate and negative impression of an organization's risk as a result of unbalanced or poor communication similarly ineffective communication might also convey the impression that the company is trying to keep stakeholders in the dark about the risk right okay since we have understood let's moving further ahead next topic will be the risk component to be communicated right in this what happens the risk co uh, component right there are three risk component let's understand the first the current risk management capability in this what happens current risk management capability it allow for the monitoring of the state of the risk management engine in the enterprise right the organization current risk management capability that it enable the monitoring of the condition of the risk management engine right is an important sign of excellent risk management is predictive how well the enterprise manages the risk and reduces the exposure right next that is the expectations from the risk management in this what happens the risk strategy policies procedure awareness training and continuous reinforcement of principles this is essential communication regarding the enterprise overall strategy toward the it risk that drive all subsequent effort on the risk management secondly it set the overall expectation from the risk management program similarly risk management is expected to include the risk strategy policies procedures and awareness training and ongoing principal reinforcement this crucial message set expectation for the risk management program and drives all subsequent risk management activities for the company's entire approach to the it risk right similarly going ahead with the third point that is the status actual regarding it risk in this what happened the risk profile of the enterprise that the key risk indicators to support the management reporting on risk that is about the event loss data root cause of the loss event and options to mitigate the risk in this the risk profile of the company right or the overall profile overall portfolio right risk to which the company is exposed the status actual with regard to the it risk right key risk indicators to support management reporting on the risk event oblique loss data 
the cause of loss event and the risk mitigation options including cost and the benefit. Okay, let's understand uh, moving further ahead. This is, uh, let's discuss about the policies and standards. What are policies? Right? Policies, as suggested, that it provides the direction regarding the acceptable and unacceptable behavior and actions to the enterprise. Right? It supports the requirement defined in the policies set forth by the senior management. Right? Next, it determines the enterprise approach toward the risk management and acceptable level of risk. Similarly, it empowers the risk management, audit, and the security staff. And it clearly states the position of the senior management toward the protection of the environment. In this, what happens? Staff in the risk management, that is audit and the security, are empowered by the policies. Okay. Similarly, senior management's attitude or information protection should be made explicit in the policies, which will make it possible to create the processes benchmark and guidelines that matches the management goals. A directive that all departments adhere to the policy standard is also provided via executive sponsorship. Right? For the purpose of allowing power to be delegated, business frequently have many level of policies. Okay? Similarly, on the senior management may declare a high level policy to further the goals outlined in the enterprise mission and vision statement. Understood? In this, now the broad strategy is not technical in nature, but to avoid being uh, rendered obsolete by the advancement in technology. Right? Similarly, high level policy may specify how laws and the best practices should be followed. Okay? It is likely to say that the managing risk entail protection and protecting the enterprise assets, especially data and the IT infrastructure that underpins the company operation. Okay, so we can say that a policy is a decision made by a governing body of organization and it is usually an internal decision made by the company to improve its operation. Okay or else a policy is a statement which articulates the principle that is intended audience should follow and should state the critical issue related to the company's long term goal and must be followed at all time. Okay, let's understand with the example, right? So in this what happens? A workplace healthy and a safety policy highlight the importance of safety to the company and to those covered by the policies. The health and the safety policy should be in line with the strategic objective such as improved service quality, reduced cost and fewer injuries. Understood? So at last, let's discuss about the standard. What is standard? Standard is a mandatory set of procedure, right? Or a process used by the organization and standard usually fit into an overall framework, right? Standards often define more detailed process or activities used to perform a specific set of tasks. Right? So standards are used for compliance reason and made mandatory by an organization or its governance. Similarly, standards are necessary course of action or regulation that provide support and direction to formal policies. Getting a company wide consensus on what standards should be in place is one of the more difficult aspect of creating standard for an information security program. Although it's a time consuming process, but it is necessary for your information security program to succeed. Okay. A standard mandates the way in which the personnel in an organization must comply with organized practices or, uh, or uh, specifications. Right? Our enterprise may uh, base its practice and operation on external standard, such as an ISO standard, or it may develop and tailor its own standard, right? such as requiring all staff to use the same product, operating system, or desktop. So, on the nutshell, if we will say that what difference between the policies and standard, we can say that the policy is why we should be doing something. Right? In the same thing, we can say that why policies 
is why we should be doing something and in nutshell if we have to def uh, define standard we can say the standards are what we should be doing right is uh, policies why we should be doing standards what we should be doing understood okay let's moving further ahead let's discuss about the risk management policies what are risk management policy risk management policy or enterprise risk policy right the first it is a methodology right it is a methodology that look at the risk management strategically from a perspective of the entire firm or organization understood it is a top down strategy that aim to identify assess and prepare for the potential losses danger and hazard and other potential for harm that may interfere with an organization operation and objective and lead to loss right similarly coming ahead with the information security policy information security policy it helps an organization to gain an understanding of security measure put in place while providing directions on how to maintain a good cyber security posture it sets up behavior guidelines relating to the protection of corporate information to include the underlying infrastructure and supporting system right moving further ahead let's discuss about this privacy policy what are privacy policy it sets the behavior guideline to protect information deemed personally identifiable or non public as defined by the appropriate statutory drivers okay let's discuss about the risk appetite and tolerance policy what is risk appetite we all know right okay let's revise it risk appetite what the risk risk appetite is described as the amount of the risk that an organization is willing to accept to achieve its objective right through the definition that the risk appetite introduces a concept that while risk can impact an enterprise success so can risk aversion understood for example we can say that we place a patient safely patient safety as a our top priority we also recognize the need to balance the level of immediate response to all patients needed with the cost of providing such services okay this demonstrate the strategic philosophy for the organization about the risk taking low appetite for the risk that might impact patient safety balanced with a higher appetite related to the response to patient care and the customer service talking about the tolerance policy we all know what is risk tolerance okay so risk tolerance are the acceptable deviation from the level set by the risk appetite and the business objective okay let's uh, understand with the example about the tolerance level like right? what happens we plan our staffing to treat all patients within 5 minutes of their appointment time an emergency walk in patient within 15 minutes right however management accepts that in rare situation that 5% of the time patients in need of non life threatening attention may not receive that attention for up to 4 hours this demonstrate the amount of variation in the parameters to be used to measure the performance and assess fit within the risk tolerance limit for a specific business process also the risk tolerance is expressed in quantifiable term understood so let's what is says that the risk appetite and tolerance policy it clearly defines the amount of the risk the enterprise is willing to accept in pursuit of the goal and objectives in addition to the criteria that it may allow with the appropriate stakeholders approval for a temporary increase of the risk to the enterprise similarly moving further ahead let's discuss about the risk acceptance policy risk acceptance policy it clearly identifies who has the authority to accept the risk on behalf of the enterprise and to what level of the risk they are authorized to accept right okay moving further ahead let's discuss about some common risk standards right the common risk standard the first the risk management standard organization it deals with united kingdom institute of risk management okay let's discuss one by one about the standard right the first the risk management standard what is the risk management standard the risk management standard sets out a specific set of strategic process which start with the overall aspiration and objective of an organization and intend to help to identify risk and promote 
the mitigation of the risk through best practices. Right? Similarly, moving next, enterprise risk management. What is enterprise risk management? The organization we deal with is the committee of sponsoring organization. So in the enterprise risk management in business, it includes the method and the processes used by the organization to manage the risk and seize opportunities related to the achievement of their objectives. That is enterprise risk management provide a framework for the risk management which typically involve identifying particular event or circumstances relevant to the organization objective, assessing them in terms of likelihood and magnitude of impact, determining a response strategy and monitoring the process. Right? Next, AS oblique NZ ZS standard 4360. What is that? It's an uh, like AS is an Australia standard or New Zealand committee. Right? In this, this joint standard was prepared by Joint Standard Australia or Standard of New Zealand Committee OB7 on the risk management as a revision of AS oblique NZS 4360. Accordingly, it retained the objective of providing a generic framework for establishing the context, identification, analysis, evaluation, treatment, monitoring and communication of risk. Moving further ahead, that is BSI 31100 Risk Management Code of Practice. BS 31100 gives the practical and specific recommendation on how to put the key principle of effective risk management into place in your organization. The information and guidance in BS 31100 will be of interest to anyone with responsibility for ensuring risk that are proactively managed in the specific area or activities. Moving further ahead, that is ISO or IEC 31000 Risk Management Principles and Guidelines. The organization we deals with the International Organization for Standardization. In this what happens, ISO 31000, that is Risk Management Guidelines, it provides the principles, a framework and a process for managing the risk. It can be used by any organization regardless of its size, activity or sector. Using ISO 31000 can help the organization increase the likelihood of achieving objectives, comma, improving the identification of opportunities and threat and effectively allocate and use resource for risk management. Similarly, next second last that is managing information security risk. The organization which deals with the National Institute of Standards and Technology. In this what happens? The information security risk management is an ongoing process of discovering, correcting and avoiding the security issues. And last, that is factor analysis of information risk, the FAIR Institute, is a taxonomy right, of factors that contribute to the risk and how they affect each other. Right? It is primarily concerned with the establishing accurate probabilities for the frequency and magnitude of data loss events. It is not a methodology to perform an enterprise risk assessment. Right? Next, coming ahead of the procedures. What is procedure? Okay. Procedures are the collection of uh, actions that must be followed in order to complete a task or process in accordance with a set of rules. Right? The procedure assists in determining how an organization actually implement, implement a policy, comma standard or regulation or control and must be followed at all times. A procedure's output is intended to fulfill a specific control. In some circumstances, we can say that the procedures are also referred as a control action. Right? In this what happens, a lack of standard and procedure makes it difficult to carry out activity in a systematic manner and may result in undependable, comma, inconsistent operation and elevated risk. Right? This practice should be discouraged in any environment in which precision is important, such as shutdown procedure for power plant or industrial machinery or complex monetary transactions. In a nutshell, if we have to say what is procedure, we can say that the procedure is how we should be doing something. Right? Okay. 
let's moving further ahead let's discuss about the exception management what is the exception management okay let's understand with the help of an example okay let us assume that an organization has a policy to fix all open security issues within six months from the date of reporting right so the organization has recently undergone a security assessment from an external security auditor who has raised multiple security issues in the third party libraries and used by the application which were assessed by the security vulnerabilities right from the auditor perspective it is very easy to say that the organization should upgrade the vulnerable library to the latest version in a penetration testing report however practically upgrading the library or any other open source software which is not in use by the organization is not straightforward most modules will technically start bombing because of upgrade right getting things to uh, work takes time understood so if the product is huge for example operating system software may not be feasible to fix it in a time frame of six months but at the same time there has to be a logical solution to this problem this is where the exception management comes into the picture right so uh, this uh, this kind of rare cases or exceptions as they are generally known need special attention understood so if exceptions are undocumented uncontrolled the level of the risk is unknown similarly it may result in undesired level of risk or overconfidence in the effectiveness of standard established control right exceptions should only be allowed through a documented formal process and at last it ensure the exceptions are removed when no longer needed right in this we can say that in order to operate secure system and achieve a secure state policies standards and procedures must be in place nevertheless there may be there may be a circumstances when an exception to a policy standard or the process is required right the degree of the risk is unclear if exceptions are not documented and regulated which might lead to an unwanted level of the risk or an overconfidence in the efficacy of existing control therefore only through a structured written procedure that needs senior management approval could exception be permitted right so the risk practitioner is responsible for making sure that an exception management procedure is in place being followed and exceptions are eliminated when they are no longer required right okay moving further ahead let's discuss about risk uh, information security risk management process right in this what happens the first is the context establishment right what is context establishment that is the setting the scene okay we'll discuss each and uh, each uh, points in a in a comprehensive way to make you understand right so the first will be the context establishment what is context establishment is setting the scene right that is setting the fundamental standards required for the creation of information security risk management and defining the process limits are included in this stage right coming moving further ahead that is risk identification what is risk identification risk identification that is the first step in the risk management process right is to identify the risk the source of the risk may be uh, from an information asset or is related to the internal oblique external issues example associated to a process the business plan or an interested party stroke stakeholder related risk right next risk analysis what is risk analysis once you know the risk you need to consider the likelihood of impact to allow you to distinguish between low likelihood and low impact versus higher ones understood moving further ahead next step will be the risk evaluation what is risk evaluation that is a risk assessment right in this stage the risk level are contrasted using criteria for accepting and evaluating the risk right this the result is a prioritized list of the risk factor and the event scenario that causes the factor to be discovered after analyzing the risk you can then prioritize investment where needed the most and conduct review based on the li posting 
you have to document what each position means so that it can be applied by anyone following the method right next that is the risk treatment last to the list in this treatment of the risk which is also known as the risk response planning must be included must include the evidence behind the risk treatment understood so in simple terms the risk treatment can be work you uh, work you are doing internally or control internally to control and tolerate the risk so it could means step you are taking to transfer the risk or it could be to terminate the risk entirely right and at last it is the risk assessment right what is risk assessment risk assessment uh, we can say is a risk evaluation understood so the value of the information assets is determined by the risk assessment which also identify the relevant threat and vulnerabilities that exist or could exist right in this the ex existing control understood and how they affect the risk identified the potential consequences and prioritizes the derived risk according to the risk valuation established during the context establishment in this the risk identification risk analysis and risk appraisal make up the process stage right okay let's discuss about the things that is risk uh, that is communication consultation right consultation in the risk communication although all of the phases right what we have discussed right now all of the phases of the risk management process the decision maker and the other stakeholder should discuss and exchange information about the risk in this transversal process okay similarly on the other hand is monitoring and review risk review and the monitoring it shows that the to detect any changes in the organization context at an early stage and to keep an overview of the full risk picture risk and its influence element should be tracked and analyzed right the first part of the monitor and the review stage of the risk management process is to describe your processes for monitoring and review this can be broken into the following areas right such as the staff engagement awareness second management review and etc okay moving further ahead hope you have understood okay let's move further ahead about the iso oblique ic 27005 process step let's first discuss what is iso oblique ir 25000 process step okay iso 25000 uh, 27005 is describe the risk management process for information and cyber security okay so it is part it is also a part of iso 27000 series which means it is its advice is a part of broader set of best practices for protecting your organization from data breaches right okay let's discuss the step one by one first context establishment setting the basic criteria defining and scope defining the scope and boundaries and third establishing an appropriate organization step of uh, operating the isrm in this what happens the risk management context set the criteria for how the risk are identified right who is responsible for the risk ownership and how risk impact the confidentiality integrity and availability of information and how the risk impact and the likelihood are calculated so the primary objective of establishing the context of the risk management is to know the risk appetite on the level of the risk that an organization is willing to accept okay so in this what happens the iso 27005 it provide the guidelines for establishing this context which determine the criteria for information security risk management okay moving further ahead that the risk assessment it determine the value of the information asset it i also identify the applicable threat and vulnerabilities so this process of step consists of the risk identification risk analysis and risk evaluation okay so let's understand many organization choose to follow an asset based on risk assessment process right it happens in the five stages 
first compiling information assets second identifying the threat and vulnerabilities applicable to each assets third assigning impact and likelihood value based on risk criteria fourth evaluating risk each risk against the predetermined level of acceptability and last that is fifth that is prioritization which risk needed need to be addressed and in which order okay moving further ahead about let's discuss about the risk identification risk identification in which the risk identification involve defining things which could cause a loss to an organization right such as asset threat vulnerabilities existing control consequences the output of the process is a list of the risk scenario with their consequences related to the assets and the business processes understood information assets such as hardware personal or process information security threat such as criminal hacking internal existing and planned security measures control vulnerabilities and etc let's discuss about the risk analysis risk analysis is the assessment of consequences that is assessment of incident likelihood determining of the level of the risk the risk analysis steps include right coming to the risk evaluation in this step the level of the risk are compared according to the risk evaluation criteria and the risk acceptance criteria the output is a prioritized risk of the risk element and the incident scenario that led to the identified risk element right in this the level of the risk are compared according to the risk evaluation criteria and the risk acceptance criteria so the output is a prioritized list of the risk element and the incident scenario that lead to the identified risk element right moving further ahead continuation of the iso ic 27005 process step now will be the will discuss about the risk treatment right there are the four ways to treat a risk as share in the slide first avoid avoid the risk by eliminating it entirely second modify the risk by applying security control sharing that is share the risk with third party though ensuring though insurance or outsourcing and at last retaining the risk that the, if the risk fall within the established risk acceptance criteria right next risk acceptance this stage comprises of a formal acceptance and recording of the suggested risk treatment plan and residual risk assessment by the management in this the organization should accept determine their own criteria for the risk acceptance that consider existing policies goals objectives and shareholder interest understood moving further ahead that is risk communication and consultation is a transversal process right the output of this process is a list of risk scenario with their consequences related to the asset and the business processes in this the effective communication is a important to the information security risk management process it ensures that those responsible for implementing the risk management understand the basis on which decisions are made and why certain actions are required sharing and exchanging information about the risk also facilitates agreement between the decision makers and other stakeholders on how to manage the risk similarly risk communication activity should be performed continually and organization should develop risk communication plan for normal operation as well as emergency situation right last the step is the risk monitoring and review in this what happens that the it is monitored and reviewed to identify any changes right in this the risk are not static and can change abruptly therefore they should be continually monitored to quickly identify changes and maintain a complete overview of the risk picture right organization should also keep a close eye on first four, um, following things 
like any new assets included within the risk management scope or asset value that require modification in response to changing business requirement new threat whether external or internal that have yet to be assessed and at last information security incident right to maintain overview of the complete risk picture right okay let's uh, understand about the moving further ahead purpose of the business process review what is business pro process review the term right okay let's first understand what is business process process review right okay a business process review is a project right that aim to identify areas in which your operations can be enhanced and provide practical solution to improve your use of software or procedures okay okay let's discuss with uh, let's understand with the example understood so uh, what happens in uh, any organization right should have an ongoing plan for continuous improvement okay in a competitive environment any change to improve upon a process can provide an edge a company need to survive and ultimately thrive okay so a good good business process review template is a valuable first step in the plan right okay let's discuss these steps first identify problem or issue with the current process gather information toward improving process prepare a road map to implement required changes assign responsibility and accountability for the project schedule individual project according to the priority monitor pro project pro uh, progress for attainment of milestone and production of deliverables review and obtain feedback on the project result and at last verify compliance to the standard and the policies okay let's understand it in this what happens a business process evaluation looks at how well and efficiently a company achieve its goal and objectives right so the organization should review its business process when responding to the risk to make sure the best solution is chosen to fit in and function well with the current environment or to determine whether the environment need to be re-engineered to increase its effectiveness and successes in achieving the organization goal right so knowledgeable individuals from each impacted department within the organization are required to participate in the business process review and it is may also involve bringing in external specialist who can offer guidance and support right so the steps have already been uh, described so the goal of the business process review is to determine how to that we have discussed earlier that is identify difficulties or problem with the present process collect data to help with the process improvement similarly create a roadmap to carry out the necessary modification project should be given ownership and accountability next will be the each project should be scheduled in accordance with its priorities and at last review and get feedback on the project result monitor project progress for achieving milestone and producing deliverables and confirm compliance with the standard and the rules right moving further ahead steps of the business process review okay to review the business process the following steps are required right the first list and assess the present business procedures right list essential procedures and supply network and services first that is identify current business process and the risk review documentation interview management user and the stakeholders observe actual processes that is the classify critical process by gra uh, granularity level that is first second or third degree or else identify responsibility and accountability for each process right second confirm with the company enterprise in this what happens we have to validate the staff training and the skill requirement document difficulties and the problem that have been found set other organization standards in this collaborate with the team member to identify potential fixes and advancement right in this what happens last uh, the 
design changes, identify dependencies, communicate the schedule of the changes, and at last measure operational efficiencies. Okay, let's discuss about the principle of the risk management. The first, connect to the enterprise objective. Okay, let's discuss about the first, the risk management principle. What is the purpose of the risk management principles, right? The purpose of the risk management is to help the businesses, right? Thus, its implementation should not adversely influence daily operation, right? The risk practitioner should take into account how procedure and control affect the capacity of the organization to achieve its goal and of user to carry out their jobs in an easy to understand way. The risk practitioner should give the risk owner this information in a way that enable them to compare it to the risk potential effect. Right? So there are six steps of the principle of the risk management. The first, connect to the enterprise objective. In this, the connect the mission or the company goal to the risk management connected to the IT. Second, align with ERM, enterprise risk management. Whenever possible, integrate the ERM, that is enterprise risk management, into the management of IT related business or the mission risk. Balance cost, oblique benefit of INT related risk. In this, the balance and advantage and disadvantage of the risk management connected to the IT. Encourage, open, uh, promote ethical and open communication. Establish tone at the top of accountability and use consistent approach aligned with the strategy. Right? In this, what happens? Despite the enterprise heavy dependence on information and related technologies, risk practitioners need to pay attention to other risks as well. These risks include risk connected to the cyber security, information security, and IT. It is also important to take into account and eventually manage the risk that arises from the diverse business lines, such as risk related to the process failures, trends that have an influence on anticipated businesses or economic cycles, or natural disasters. So the risk IT framework guiding principles apply to any danger that might potentially impede the organizations from achieving its stated business goal and objectives and should be addressed in light of these goals. Right? Okay. Let's moving further ahead. Let's discuss about the risk management process and the control. Right? Uh, risk management processes and control, it happens like con it considers how control will integrate into the existing environment. Right? In this what happens, the care and thought must be taken into account while introducing the new procedures and control or making changes to already existing ones. Any setting in which the changes is introduced may encounter opposition. Thus, it is important to appropriately convey the advantages and value to the relevant stakeholders. Right? In addition to the change of procedure and control is frequently seen as a hindrance to the workforce since it requires an additional step or else interference with their ability to carry out their task. Right? So because of this, a new technology should, if feasible, and especially when they are introduced, be as clear to the end user as possible. Right? So the introduction of transparent technical control, it limits the likelihood of a member of a workforce from finding a workaround to the control and leaving the enterprise with a false sense of security. Right? Transparent technical control, it generally reduces the perception right that the implementation of the control and by extension the risk practitioner is impeding the successful completion of their activities right they also reduce the likelihood that a worker will find a workaround to the control and giving the enterprise a false sense of security right and at last the risk practitioner need to highlight the benefit and value gained right the risk practitioner must also emphasize the advantages and benefit of implementing or changing procedure or control as well as how doing so shows compliance with the different laws and the standards. 
since considering a business process that handle and store sensitive data such as personal health information it is crucial to step, keep the data safe against the unauthorized disclosure modification or deletion user without a need to know may be prevented from accessing sensitive data by masking it or hiding it or restricting it to read only once more uh, only read only mode right such control may be effectively integrated into system and application as kind of proactive risk management right okay let's moving further ahead let's discuss about the it risk in relation to other businesses right in this what happens first is the business continuity okay let's first have the general idea about the it risk in relation to other businesses okay so given the exponential increase in reliance on it that every company is having an it nowadays it it risk is a crucial component of business generally speaking a organization won't be able to reap the benefit and reward of pursuing a course of action unless it is ready to accept the risk however taking on too much risk or going above your risk tolerance might result in catastrophic failure of the firm as well as the loss of capital similarly senior management who is in charge right of not only creating the enterprise risk appetite and tolerance criteria clear assertion on how much risk to take and which chances to pass up but also making sure that these criteria are communicated so we can say that it risk is a subset of a business risk even though it is a risk practitioner main focus to do this a risk practitioner must comprehend the enterprise risk culture and use it to guide or inform the it risk strategy right the it department exists to assist the company in achieving its strategic mission and achieving its goal and objectives so similarly the business does not exist so that the organization may have an it department so let's discuss about the business continuity business continuity and it risk management are closely related concept right so in this under uh, we'll go ahead with the slides let's just understand first okay so it is a closely related concept and the business function is concerned with maintaining the essential business operation and the organization ability to withstand adversity that might hinder the achievement of its goal and the purpose similarly enterprise make an effort to lower an all it risk to manageable level through risk management so the risk practitioner collaborate with the incident management and business continuity team to identify the potential threat and set up the mechanism to detect contain and recover from an adverse event if it should occur even though the control or effort of it risk management may not be able to prevent a failure okay so an established business continuity capability can serve as a starting point for the risk management effort when it is available this is because uh, you know business impact analysis have already identified key processes business criticality and what the organization has determined to be acceptable and by inverse unacceptable losses to the enterprise so in the similar way it uh, written that the business is concerned with the preservation of critical business function ability to survive an adverse event right so using uh, business continuity plan organizations attempt to reduce all it related risk to acceptable level as we have discussed right if a business continuity plan is already in place that help the risk practitioner to leverage the existing business impact analysis understood okay let's discuss about the audit an audit provide the management with the independent assurance regarding control right so in the audit function is an important part of corporate governance right that provide the management with the assurance regarding the effectiveness of control framework it risk management program and compliance so in a world of increasing uh, legislation government oversight and media sec, uh, uh, sc scrutiny organizations must diligently demonstrate an adequate control environment and proactive risk management practices for that reason is audit should be 
conducted by objective right it involves the formal inspection and verification of compliance and accuracy the it auditor should be independent and skilled in the area where the audit need to be conducted an auditor should also should not be subject to undue influence from the management friends the audit is a, a, a rigorous planned examination right that call for expertise and subject matter knowledge in the area being inspected the audit may be erroneous and of little use if is auditor is unfamiliar with the technology being used the importance of the operational condition or requirement of the company audit of is must also be impartial right the development of is audit plan frequently involves senior management and if one of these managers engages in improper behavior it may limit the is audit capacity to carry out their responsibilities efficiently even if there is no wrongdoings the impression of prejudice might lead to a reduction in the value of an audit finding so to make sure that there is no conflict of interest the risk practitioner should examine the connection between the is auditor and the region being audited right coming to the last that is the information security in this what happens the is risk management drive the selection of control and justifies right if the it risk management activity is not conducted properly information security controls are almost certain be incorrectly designed poorly implemented and improperly operated right every uh, risk practitioner should be able to demonstrate the purpose of each control and explain the reason behind its selection right in this what happened the choice of control is influenced by it risk management which also support their initial and ongoing functioning so similarly information security measures will almost certainly be erroneously conceived or uh, badly implemented and inadequately administered if the it risk management activity is not effectively carried out so every control should be able to be linked to a specific it risk that is intended to reduce and the risk practitioner should be able to show each control function and provide justification for this selection right okay let's moving further ahead let's discuss about the first uh, that is project risk what is it is a uh, it is a type of it risk in relation to other businesses right so let's discuss about the project risk what is a project risk what happens this type of risk is associated with the failure of an it project right such failures may be measured by the cost time or the success of the project in addressing the organizational need similarly managing the potential of project risk may result in the higher incidence of the project success and stakeholder satisfaction right so in this what happens the numerous study of it projects have shown that the majority of them might be regarded as failure and many initiative fail so failure of a project can be determined by its going over budget taking longer than expected or not delivered what was promised so if a project fulfill its promises but the deliverables fell short of the need and expectation of the client it may still be considered a failure an organization may be at risk from the failure of an it project which might result in the lost market share a failure to take advantage of new possibilities or other negative effect on client or stroke shareholders and employees so project successes and stakeholder satisfaction are quite likely to increase as a result of identifying and properly managing project risk for further details we'll be uh, le- learning more about in the domain 4 right okay let's discuss about the change risk what is change risk risk changes with time right as the name suggest so this type of the risk is associated with the changes in the risk when new information system or business processes is put into operation right system in use are subject to wide range of risk due to change in technology laws business procedures functionality and architecture 
user and other factors that influence the businesses and technology technological environment of the firm intentional alteration to the system uh, configuration or architecture that render the control that were initially effective as intended ineffective may likewise modify the risk level of that system so similarly the risk practitioner job is to continuously manage the risk thus they need to be aware of the new risk that might be brought on by new threat new or regulation so all of this development might have an impact on the enterprise risk posture and lead to a new degree of risk that was not sufficiently addressed in prior effort at the risk identification so in this existing control may become ineffective due to changes in the operational environment right so let's discuss about the next that is control risk what is control risk a control is chosen to reduce the risk right but it is not working properly if it is not working properly it may not stop a failure or compromise that happening and may even provide the impression that everything is secure right the risk of control failure may be increased by the selection of erroneous control or the inaccurate configuration of the control or we can say that the improper operation of the control the failure to minor and evaluate the control or insufficiency of the control to handle the new threat so to choose the most reliable and effective control take into account a variety of criteria recognize the many shots of control available as well as the strength and the weakness of the control being suggested right give the risk owner a variety of control alternatives otherwise uh, you have to basically issue an ultimatum right so let's discuss about the first next is the organization assets what is organization asset asset is something either tangible or intangible value that is worth protecting right so we'll discuss in the upcoming slides let's uh, look at the examples that the uh, in this what happens the value position whether material or immaterial is referred to as an asset uh, like such as data information and knowledge uh, reputation a uh, brand intellectual uh, property facilities equipment cash and investment similarly uh, customer list research people and service businesses process are few examples of the assets that found frequently found in the organizations right okay let's discuss what are the impact of the uh, impact on the organization assets okay the first people what happens enterprises are valuable to the loss of key employees right in this many businesses are susceptible to losing a key employee who can be the only one with the knowledge in a certain field or a particular area of expertise so unfortunately it happens frequently when management fail to recognize essential person and make sure that they are supported through cross training so adequate documentation of critical procedures completed an incentive program and maybe the business may be left in a hazardous so unfortunately it happens that a freak uh, the happens frequently when management fail to recognize right essential personnel and make sure that they are supported through cross training right adequate documentation of critical procedures completed and incentive programs so in this the business may be left in a hazardous or a vulnerable situation if the loss happens as a consequence of retirement sickness or recruitment by any other company right so let's discuss next point that is data what is data in it what happens that it include the customer list financial data marketing plan hr data or research it must ensure the protection of data in all forms and location at all times in this the many businesses view data as being the one of the utmost value right so data related assets including such as uh, customer list financial information or marketing strategies human resource data and research should be safeguarded 
Understood? Data must always be safeguarded by the system that host, process and transfer them regardless of the format right or the location so in this identify the business value and define the security classification right the firm should clearly define the commercial value of the data in order to assure the right treatment usage and the protection of the data along with the defining the proper data security classification it is important to describe the various data element that must be taken into account the potential consequences of a confidentiality integrity or availability breach as well as the corresponding control that are in place to make sure that the risk is kept to a minimum right okay let's further discuss or discuss ahead that is technology in it what happens in technology that the rapid techn technological change and ongoing technological development right so the risk practitioner should take into account the risk associated with out dated technology which is frequently disregarded in addition of in addition to being aware of emerging technologies and the danger they offer right so equipment that has reached its mean, mean time between failure or is no longer maintained any be um, maintained may be particularly susceptible right additionally although through contract vehicles like extended support could increase the system availability over time they also raise ongoing operational expenses right so older system could need no, uh, knowledge that is hard to come by the main, uh, come to maintain right and they may be vulnerable to malware or misuse if they are not patched and updated so older system could also lack adequate documentation and become dependent on a single vendor for maintenance or be challenging to sustain in the terms of new component right next apply patches and regular maintenance and securely dispose of the technology and containing data that is system that are slated for trash might have critical information right the risk practitioner should confirm that there are adequate process in the place for safely discarding such data and that these procedures are followed consistently the best secure disposal technology technique for a given system depend in part of the device physical characteristics as well as the degree of data sensitivity overwriting degaussing and actual physical destruction of the device are often used technique for erasing the data the company might need to keep a copy of the program on hand or even a legacy system to read the data if they would be needed in the future right keys or password file must also be properly handled and preserved in the event of encrypted data it may have an impact of such activity if retired systems are not removed from black backup plan or business continuity plan or disaster recovery plan right okay let's discuss further ahead last that is intellectual property right in this what happens it uh, intellectual property include the things like trademark copyright patent or a trade secret and other things related to the organization reputation goodwill and research that result in the new product since it may reflect the company's potential for future profit intellectual property is a sort of information that requires special attention right losing a competitive edge might happen if intellectual property is not protected so non disclosure agreement should be signed by all the workers and the business partners and they should be reminded of their obligation to safeguard and manage the company's intellectual property this can entail stringent access restriction document destruction prudence when disclosing information in the public and encryption of data on removal device understood so what is trademark okay the tra word trademark right let's uh, have a overview about the trademark right so a trademark is any distinguishing symbol that is used to identify a certain commodity or business such as word phrase color or logo there are certain trademarks that can be registered right similarly copyright any work that is recorded in a physical form is protected by the copyright including written work recording pictures softwares music sculptures and dance right 
ट्रेड सीक्रेट वॉट इज ट्रेड सीक्रेट अ मैथड और अ प्रोसीजर डिजाइन प्रैक्टिस और अदर टाइप ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंशियल कमर्शियल इंफॉर्मेशन दैट गिव द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दैट हैज इट अ कॉम्पिटेटिव एडवांटेज राइट ओके मूविंग फर्दर हेड लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट द एसेट वैल्युएशन वॉट इज द एसेट वैल्युएशन determining the importance of asset in the context of organization activity giving priority to protecting the most important asset first and less significant asset at the time and the budget allow this is the method of assessing the worth of organization information system assets based on uh, its cia security right so we can say in other words like a total asset value is equal to asset value into weight of the asset right the value of an asset depend upon the sensitivity of data inside the container and their potential impact on cia similarly cia of information will have a minimum value of 1 for each right not all assets are created equal while some are indispensable to corporate operation and other just indirectly support and benefit them in order to safeguard the most essential asset first and handle the less significant asset when time and money permits the risk practitioner should attempt to assess the relevance of asset in the context of organizational operation effective appraisal also safeguard against the organization having to pay more for insurance than the asset is worth right it may not be simple as it first seem to determine the value of an asset bring to a business the quantitative technique that many businesses employ to give monetary value can be challenging when value impacts or motivate intangible like confidence morale or market perception for instance we can calculation uh, based on the impact of confidentiality integrity or availability right so let's discuss one by one in this what happens the first it uh, not all assets are created equal right while some are indispensable to corporate operation just other indirectly support and benefit them in order to safeguard the most essential asset first and handle the less significant asset when time and money permit the risk practitioner should attempt to assess the relevance of asset in the context of organizational operations so effective appraisal also safeguard against the organization having to pay more for insurance than the asset is worth right it may not be as simple as it first seem to determine the value right uh an asset bring to the business the quantitative technique that many businesses employ to give monetary value can be challenging when the value impact or motivate intangible like coincidence uh, sorry confidence morale or market perception for instance regardless of the quality of a actual product if a firm location or product is linked to a poor quality environmental carelessness or fraudulent activity the market may view the product as being of inferior quality because an organization may recover the stigma of a bad reputation may linger for many years right okay let's moving further ahead let's discuss about the second part that that is all about the risk governance right what is risk governance risk governance covers the area that relate to developing the organization risk appetite right its risk tolerance and its entire culture and attitude with regard to the risk in this process the roles and responsibility are defined and relevant governance is examined for requirement that must be fulfilled in managing the risk okay with this as an overview let's moving ahead and let's understand it more clearly so the risk management function the process practices and activities which fall within management's purview need to be sufficiently governed to ensure the continuous alignment with the organization's goal and objectives similarly when the where the governing body sets the enterprise strategy and direction relating to the risk management capability it is upon to the management to successfully deliver on that capability 
so it what happens to maintain the alignment right with the enterprise goal and objective risk management function the processes practices and the activity that fall within the management purview need to be well managed management is responsible for successfully implementing right risk management skills where the governing body establishes the organization strategy and the direction so aligning the risk management skill to support and meet organizational expectation is un, uh, is necessary for risk governance right okay let's moving further ahead we'll discuss about the enterprise risk management and the risk management framework since there are two terms associated with the heading that is enterprise risk management erm and risk management framework so let's discuss how does the enterprise risk management differ from traditional risk management right some few people spin the difference on timing right some uh, some says that the traditional risk management typically only occurs after an incident has already happened and is done to prevent the situation from happening again on the other hand enterprise risk management is a future looking and attempt to determine potential event and situation that could or are even likely to occur so we can say that the traditional risk management tend to focus on the risk avoidance while enterprise risk management take note of the potential risk and identify which one right are worth taking therefore focusing more on the opportunity alongside pure risk right so in this the risk management is defined as a coordinated activity to direct and control an enterprise regarding the risk what are the challenges the risk can be viewed as a challenge to achieving objective and the risk management as the activity undertaken to predict challenge and lower their chance of occurring or impact so the coordinated effort to guide and regulate a company with regard to the risk are known as risk management simply said risk is a hurdle to attaining goals and the risk management is the activity likely to foresee risk and reduce their likelihood of happening or effect so the risk practitioner should be aware of the upside down quality and duality of the risk since it can help and maximize the possibilities so the risk choice can for instance include the weighing the possible advantages that could result from seizing chances against the missing benefit that could result from passing up the same possibility same uh, it is reflected uh, under the opportunity head that the effective risk management can also assist in maximizing opportunities and the risk practitioner should keep this upside oblique downside duality of the risk in mind right okay let's moving further ahead let's discuss about the it risk management good practices first the it risk management is effective when it is followed as a structured method based on the good practices and desire to seek continuous improvement right so it begin by reviewing current practices of the organization in the identification assessment response and monitoring and reporting of the risk they can gain insight into how the organization view risk management and identify shortcomings which can facilitate the development of a consistent program in this what happens the greatest consistent success is seen when the it risk management strategy follow a systematic methodology built on uh, built on best practices and a dedication to continuous improvement so before beginning a new risk management effort the risk practitioner should evaluate the enterprise current procedure for detection appraisal reaction monitoring and reporting of the risk so the risk practitioner may identify areas where the present program may follow or deviate from established best practices based on this preliminary evaluation which can aid in the creation of unified plan and provide a wealth of information about how the organization perceive the risk management right so the risk pra practitioner may find it advantageous to formally embrace or informally draw upon one or more well established standard or the framework if good practices are not already in place this may also assist to guarantee 
that the risk management program is comprehensive and authoritative. Similarly, the risk management program should be comprehensive, that is thorough detailed, right? Comprehensive thorough, that is complete, carried out uh, uh, to completion, right? Auditable, that is reviewed by the independent third party. Justifiable, based on the reason, uh, solid, solid logic. Complain with policy, laws, or regulations. Monitored, monitored like uh, subject to the review and accountability. Enforce, that is consistent, mandated, and obligatory. Same, uh, up, up to date, right? Up to date is a current with the evolving business process, technology, and the legislation managed that is adequately resourced with oversight and assistance and etc while keeping in mind that uh, that any standard or the framework may need to be modified to support the specific goals of the enterprise so the risk practitioner should be aware of these changes and take action to ensure that the organization adopt the practices that are informed by the best industry knowledge and experience currently uh, available Okay, let's moving further ahead. Let's discuss about the establishing an enterprise approach to the risk management. So the risk management is an enterprise activity that benefit from the standardized and structured approach, comma is enterprise awareness and executive sponsorship. So the system, it means that the standardized and a systematic strategy that can be used to apply to the whole organization without significant modification or adaption is beneficial for the risk management as the enterprise activity. So risk can be identified on a system by system or project by project basis. Right? In this what happens? Uh, like uh, without the systematic strategy, a risk may be assessed differently in various contexts. Right? resulting in the gaps across the system or the project boundaries. So in this, uh, the, uh, that being said, risk should occasionally be per, uh, personalized, right? So different culture and the business model of a large organization with numerous division, department, lines of business and product or services offering may call for adapting to the requirement of each organization, right? So there is not a single risk management strategy that work for all business model or for all divisions of uh, a big and a varied company. So before suggesting a risk management strategy or culture or framework, the risk practitioner must be mindful of the local department, right? Objectives, rules, goals and constraint. Even when it is customized, the suggested structure out to be the mostly constant throughout the organization, right? It is crucial in particular that the outcome of risk management across different division be compared, right? So it has to be no single approach is best for all type of enterprises. So we have to be sensitive to the local department culture, priorities, regulation, goal and the restraint. And same apply approach to the entire enterprise without substantial modification or customization right okay let's moving ahead tone at the top that is uh, that is executive sponsorship right so senior management should require consultation right with the risk practitioner as a part of a new pro uh, project and ensures that recommendation of the risk management program are evaluated and objectively addressed before approving or funding the project or business initiative because enterprise risk management benefit greatly from their clear support. Executive sponsorship, however, is an act right, of providing visible and sustained support for information security initiatives. So without executive sponsorship, information security initiative may lack the necessary funding resource and attention from the senior management right this sets the right tone at the top understood moving further ahead 
let's discuss about the policy. What is policy? Is a critical part of establishing the risk management process and is development and approval of a concise, coherent risk management policy that reflect the attitude and intent of management in relation to risk. Also, the creation accept, uh, acceptance of succinct, oblique, uh, clear risk management policy that represent the mindset and intent of management with regard to risk is a crucial step in creating the risk management process. A risk management policy should establish responsibility, comma, define a commitment to continual improvement of the risk environment and provide a statement referring to the thinking or justification for the approach to accepting or limiting the risk. In this, the risk management policy should include a statement relating to the reasoning or rationale behind the approach to accepting or mitigating the risk, set accountability and articulate a commitment to a continuous improvement of the risk environment. Moving further ahead, let's discuss about the three line of defense. First line, own and manages the risk. Second line, oversee the risk. And third line, it provides the independent testing and assurance. Right? Many organizations have adopted the three line of defense to strengthen their enterprise risk management skill across all of their diverse business lines, hence developing more strong enterprise risk management program. This model highlights a number of business roles between the risk practitioner, that is a person doing risk management duties, and the risk owner, the key person who is ultimately accountable and liable for how risks are managed. Right? So the basic procedure, that is a, a routine task and a responsibility pertaining to the risk management skill must be established by the risk practitioner. This entails providing for the proper amount of the risk supervision and assurance level as well as clearly defining the boundaries between the governance and management roles. Right? Okay, let's discuss one by one. The first, the first line of defense, also known as operational management. Right? In this what happens, the first line of defense is the frontline employees. Right? who must understand their roles and the responsibility with regard to processing transactions and who must follow a systematic risk process. So depending upon the size of the organization, the enterprise business unit, right, so like a, a somewhat known as division, may have a risk management committee. Right? So the risk management committee is the first line of defense of the risk governance framework. So this committee is empowered with the responsibility and accountability to effectively plan, build, run and monitor its department's day-to-day -day risk environment. The committee provides uh, direction right, regarding the risk response for those risks that are outside of the business unit risk tolerance. So the business unit, right, a, a business unit or a component or a business function that conducts daily operating activity, especially those that are the front line of the enterprise, often implement the first line of defense. They are required to do their uh, uh, things such as uh, they ensure the conductive environment, uh, control environment in the business unit. Second, that is implement the risk management policies regarding the roles and the responsibilities. And third, they execute the effective internal control and monitoring in their business unit. Right. So we can say that the operational managers, right, that are company owners who are in charge of managing the risk as the first line of defense, they are in a nutshell as the no, also can be termed as a risk owner. So they are in charge of carrying out the remedial measures to deal with the risk that exceeds the specified risk appetite. This involves accountability for the control put in place to maintain the risk at the acceptable level. Right. Okay, moving further ahead, let's discuss about the second, that is the second line of defense, also known as the risk and compliance function. In this the second line of defense is the enterprise compliance and the risk function that provide independent oversight, right, of the risk management activity of the first line of defense. The compliance and the risk function, as mentioned, also known as the second line of defense, 
may have their own management and governance committee that are part of the enterprise risk management framework or may have the direct reporting lines with the appropriate ERM. The responsibility of these second line functions typically include participating in the business unit risk committee, reviewing the, uh, reviewing the risk report and, uh, uh, and we can say that the validating compliance to the risk management framework requirement with the objective of ensuring that the risks are actively and appropriately managed. Right? Sometimes the risk practitioner work to gain enterprise wide consensus by in an adoption of the risk management standard framework. To uh, make sure that the first line defense are correctly planned, put into action and function intended. Right? The risk management activities are concentrated within the second line of defense. Although these roles have some autonomy from the, for, uh, uh, from the front line of defense, they are still managerial roles that add some subjectivity and bias since they might have a direct impact on the establishment or modification of risk management and control system. Right? Establishing uh, an accepted risk management standard the, and that defines and enable assessment of the risk management program. Right? Com uh, Comprises of the risk management and compliance function and is expected to establish the business aligned risk management framework is another crucial second line activity and the risk practitioner should carry out because this will be the uh, this will be used by the third line of defense to evaluate effectiveness and efficiency right so the definition and provision of the standard against the risk management program will be evaluated are provided by the formation of an acknowledged risk management standard pertaining to the procedure, practices and the activities. For a number of reasons, this is advantageous. First of all, it requires the less work from the audit in terms of both completing the audit and developing their own standard to measure the conformity. Second, it lessens the possibility of false positive or result brought out on developing unique standard. Thirdly, it concentrates audit effort on the enterprise accepted standard rather than necessitating trying to apply industry best practices that might be might not be sorry might not be in line with the enterprise aim and objectives so finally it presents the risk management right as a business conversation by allowing the company to choose whether or not to adopt a standard based on the audit result that is based on what is thought to be an industry best practices right let's moving further ahead let's discuss about the third line of defense that is audit so friends the third line of defense right is providing a senior management and governing body with a required degree right of assurance through impartial and unbiased evaluation carried out by the enterprise internal audit capacity and external audit wherever it is relevant right so assessing the risk management program compliance with the originally uh, ori uh, organizationally accepted and approved standard is what an internal auditor is intended to perform right so depend upon the degree of assurance needed the risk practitioner may be asked to commit on the design stroke implementation or uh, effectiveness and efficiency of the first or second line processes, practices, activities and control and to offer the relevant context. So the, inter the third line of defense that is the internal and external auditor and the US Sabrinus Oxley Act compliance team wherever it is applicable understood is not under uh, applicable to each and everything but wherever it is applicable who report independently to the senior committee charged with the role of representing the enterprise stakeholders related to the risk issue. So the internal external auditor and a Sabrinus Oxley team regularly review the first and the second line of defense activities and result which includes the risk governance function involved to ensure that the enterprise risk management arrangement and the structures are appropriate and are discharging their roles and responsibilities completely and accurately. Okay, let's moving further ahead. Let's discuss about the 
the role of risk practitioner within the three line of defense. Friends, the risk practitioner frequently collaborate with the organization first two line of defense, right? And audit uh, gives uh, right the governing board and the senior management. Right, the independent and objectivity they need to assess whether the organization is in compliance with the relevant standard and the framework that the risk practitioner has identified and that the organization has adopted. So the risk practitioner are uniquely positioned inside the organization to help senior management, the audit committee and the board of directors to provide enterprise assurance on the risk governance and the risk uh, management system right by virtue of their role the risk practitioner is positioned to act in an advisory capacity on the variety threat and the risk being faced right let's moving further ahead let's discuss about the risk profile okay what is the risk profile first let's understand about the risk profile so before uh, going ahead with the presentation we can say that the risk profile is a collection of detailed data on identified IT risk, right? So the risk profile can certainly cover a single system or a asset, but are also often seen as a describing risk on an organizational wide basis. So during this step of the risk evaluation, a comprehensive document of identified risk and their characteristics such as detail regarding impact, likelihood and contributing factors is developed and maintained through the asset or system life cycle. Keeping in mind that system or asset risk profile are usually rolled up into the more uh, comprehensive risk document that uh, uh, cover system, asset and business process across the entire organization. Right? Okay. Based on the overall risk posture of the enterprise and its uh, enterprise, it is attentiveness to the monitor and control uh, effectiveness. Second, proactivity in identifying, addressing or preventing the risk. And third, developing of a risk culture. So the purpose of the risk management function is to meet the demand right, of the business. Risk management is an ongoing cyclic process that acknowledges the dynamic nature of the risk right, and the need for continuing uh, monitoring and, eval and uh, uh, evaluation since the company changes through time. So the program maturity may bring about a little period of stability but the risk practitioner cannot relax. The risk profile is based on the enterprise total risk posture which is evident in the attention to monitor the efficient, uh, efficacy of control, proactive risk, identification, proactive risk management and creation of a risk culture. Management should, uh, you know, uh, pay close attention, right, uh, as to how the risk management method and culture evolve and mature. Numerous variable, as uh, shown, that is a new technology, changes to the business practices, merger and acquisition, new or amended rule, changes in the customer expectation, or competitor action, effectiveness of risk awareness program may cause the change in the risk profile, right? Risk as it occur at the level of individual system, facilities and the processes produces risk at the organization level, right? Similar to the health and the safety and information security and organization risk posture may be impacted by the ripple consequence of seemingly insignificant activities. Let's moving further ahead. Let's discuss about the IT risk management objective and the goals. Friends, in this IT risk management objective and the goals should be reviewed to ensure that they continue to be aligned with the goals and objectives of the senior management on the regular basis. Many organizations find it beneficial to perform the review on the annual basis and to include criteria for monitoring, threshold and use for the KPI in the KRI, policies and strategies of the risk and the reporting schedule and the list of the key stakeholders to be notified when the KPI or the KRI exceed their threshold. The review also provides a valuable opportunity to review the program in terms of increasing maturity, including the complete, uh, completion of the risk response and mitigation activities. 
the training of the staff, the success of awareness program, improved response time to student incident, and timely rollout of the patches, and better alignment and communication among the management, audit, business continuity, physical security, and information security departments. Right? Risk is owned by the management, but the risk practitioner has a key role in ensuring that the management is aware of the current IT risk profile and the risk is being managed in a way that meet management objectives. Throughout the, uh, these phases of the IT risk management process, the risk practitioner work with the risk owner, right? That is the IT staff, third party, or else uh, you can take the incident response team and auditors to monitor the risk and evaluate the effectiveness and efficiency of the control framework. As an incident occur, lessons learned are used to improve the risk management process through better knowledge uh, or staffing or technical control and uh, response team, etc. So these benefits can help and avoid future problems, minimize the impact of the future incident and sustain the business operations. So let's discuss about the risk capacity, appetite and tolerance, right? So let's understand it in a simple way, the risk capacity, appetite and the tolerance, right? What is risk capacity? We can say the maximum risk an organization can afford to take, right? It can be termed as risk capacity, right? What is risk tolerance? Risk tolerance, we can say that the risk tolerance level are accepted deviation from the risk appetite. Appetite. They are always lower than the risk capacity. Right? Uh, and at last, that the risk appetite, that the amount of the risk an organization is willing to take. Right? Uh, we have heard that the risk capacity is always greater as compared to the tolerance and appetite. So tolerance can either be equal or greater than appetite. However, risk tolerance level are acceptable deviation from the risk appetite. Right? In this case, what happens that every business has a unique risk capacity, which is a quantifiable amount of loss it can sustain without having its viability called into question. So the enterprise risk appetite is determined by the owner or a board of directors subject to the absolute maximum imposed by the risk capacity. The amount of the risk that an entity is ready to endure in order to further its objective is known as risk appetite. Right? So the board of directors may occasionally assign senior management the responsibility of determining the risk appetite as part of strategic planning. However, determining the risk capacity and appetite right, uh, at the corporate level has a number of advantages such as supporting and supplying evidence for risk based decision making process or supporting the comprehension of how each business component contribute to the overall risk profile. Right, So we can say that the uh, to keep the risk level within the parameters specified by the risk appetite, a variety of criteria and the policies are translated into the concept of risk appetite. This limit must be updated or reaffirmed on frequent basis. So as long as the enterprise and the risk environment remain largely unchanged and, un, uh, and accountability for the risk is assigned to a specific owner, risk may be accepted within these restrictions through a formal and explicit process that states that the risk does not want uh, warrant does not require any additional response from the enterprise so the term risk tolerance right refer to the set of condition in which the deviation from the established risk appetite are accepted as long as they satisfy particular requirement although these deviations are undesirable it is recognized that they fall sufficiently below the risk capacity. So accepting of the risk is still an option when the compelling business requirement uh, exists and other uh, and uh, and you can say that the other alternative should be prohibitively expensive. So the risk tolerance may be outlined using IT processes metrics or compliance with established IT procedures and rules which translate the necessary IT goals. So for example, we can say that the acceptable degree of variance that the management is ready to accept for any specific risk while the organization pursue its objectives is known as the risk tolerance. Right? 
so we can say the number of uh, all stakeholders right all stakeholders must uh, must be aware of the senior management definition and approval of the risk appetite and tolerance as well as the mechanism in place to evaluate and approve any deviation at the proper level of authority so a number of uh, events including new technology organization changes or shift in the company strategy may necessitate the corporation uh, uh, to reevaluate its risk portfolio and reaffirm its risk appetite as with all risk risk appetite and tolerance evolve over time right so we can say that the uh, effective risk monitoring and communication to the changes in the risk appetite consistent uh, changes of the risk appetite and the related tolerance for each organized unit consistency between the risk appetite objective and the pertinent reward system right consistent implementation across all unit right okay let's moving further ahead let's discuss about the legal regulatory and contractual requirement friends what happens the business uh, in the businesses are subject to the fines for breaking the rules and regulation of the countries in which they are conducting the business right so understanding the law that apply to the business and the requirement is crucial but it may be difficult since many of them are ambiguous and uh, don't want uh, don't always specify the exact degree of compliance they must be met for instance a legislation can call for sensitive data to be protected adequately without defining how much protection is sufficient additionally rules and regulation may conflict with other uh, with one another making it challenging for a organization that work in many part of the world to adhere to all local laws similarly a global program uh, uh, of policies right and a control uh, suit may be developed by a business that operate internationally or even within multiple areas of single nation to manage the common rules and a nation or a national supplement may be used to handle expectations and their corresponding controls right so in this uh, to establish a sufficient grasp of what is required a risk practitioner charged with developing such a program of overseeing one that currently exist should collaborate with the legal counsel and other expert within the organization if an enterprise wishes to ensure compliance it must be able to monitor and assess the control being used right between reporting period and reports must be consistent and any trend or incident of non compliance must be identified and corrected operation so at last we can say that the identify which law to apply to the enterprise and understand the requirement including issues like interpretation and compliance right in some uh, circumstances voluntary standard may also be uh, subject to compliance right so operation across the region or the nation may build global and specialized program to handle the regulations more effectively understood okay let's moving further ahead let's discuss about the pci data security standard like right? it's a high level just have an overview right okay first build and maintain a secure network and the system how to go ahead about uh, how to do about it first to safeguard a cardholder data install and maintain a firewall setup right however uh, we can say the avoid using the system password and any security parameters default provided by the vendor right second protect cardholder data in this uh, keep the cardholder information secure right however encrypt data transfer via open public network including card holders next point maintain a vulnerability management program so in this uh, keeping a vulnerability management program going like to prevent uh, we can do it by prevent a malware on all computers and keep antivirus software or programs up to date right and similarly create and maintain secure software and system right next point implement strong access control measures put stringent access control mechanism in place in this limit who has access to cardholder information based on business necessity recognize and verify user with access uh, to system component and limit the physical uh, like uh, access to the information about the cardholders 
right? And at last, that the monitor, uh, regular monitor and test network. In this, keep a track of, uh, 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 like, uh, keep a track of and keep an eye on all network resources and cardholder data access. Regularly test the security system and the processes. Right? Even though the compliance is mandated by the law, the risk practitioner should never forget that it is a risky decision. According to the risk appetite established by the senior management, risk is managed in the most economical way feasible. An organization may decide not to comply with the certain rules or regulations. If the cost of compliance is higher than, uh, than the fine or the repercussion imposed for non-compliance, depending on the penalties associated with the disobedience. Right? Okay, let's uh, go ahead further. Professional ethics of the risk management. In this what happens? Risk is often impacted by the professional ethics. So the professional ethics frequently have, a, have an influence on the risk Right, it uh, seems sense that a company with a weak ethical standard would be more likely to commit fraud or theft, but the same can be said of a company with a weak management. Procedures for spotting mistakes, abuse or fraud. Ethics are influenced by a person's sense of what is going, what is good and what is wrong, although they are not always tied by the law. Right, so well-treated employees can, uh, an example of Ali, Poor treated employees may seek revenge causing serious consequences. For instance, we can say that the uh, while receiving pre uh, present from a customer or supplier is permiss permissible in certain organization. It is not in other others, right? Some senior management must inform everyone about the enterprise ethical policy and make sure it is clearly implemented and make sure that everyone is subjected to it in order to reduce the possibility of someone's breaking it. Right? Certain industry incorporate ethics into the expectation, which can result in establishing, reporting and conformance requirement of the professionals. Right? So ethics also affects how individuals feel they have been handled in their opinion. Right? A happy employee may be actively promote the appropriate conduct. In contrast, a worker who, workers who feel mistreated may seek retribution which might have a catastrophic repercussion. Friends, here we come to the end of domain 1, that is governance. As per the series CRM 7, stay tuned for more updates. Please subscribe to our channel and share among your friends. Thank you.